Hi, I'm Mike Rowan. Welcome to part three of Retro Printing for Fun and Profit, sharing new and old printers with new and old computers. In part two, we installed the operating system and configured networking on a Raspberry Pi Zero wireless. Now it's time to connect the printer and install CUPS, the common Unix printing system. All right, so let's talk about interfacing a printer to our Raspberry Pi. Here I've got the cover on it. It's running, it's available on the network, that's great, but we need to plug the printer in somehow. Well, when I first started this project, I thought I'll use the serial port just like the color computer does. But there are a few issues with that. There's basically two ways you can connect a serial port uh, to a Raspberry Pi. You can use a uh, like a Max 232 adapter, which I have here. But most of these, the majority of these, only provide uh, transmit, receive, and ground. The other issue is, okay, I could use a USB to serial uh, adapter. However, these vary widely too, based on the features and the price. This is a $5 Keyspan one. It only provides transmit, receive, and ground. It doesn't even offer, you know, continuous pins off for RTS, CTS, or DSR, DTR. So uh, here's a TrendNet one. Same thing. It doesn't offer. It's just 2, 3, and 7. My most expensive, you know, my Cadillac... Uh, USB to serial is the StarTech, and it does have RTS CTS, and those are uh, set to be normally high on this adapter. I think it will do CTS RTS, but as I said, you would need some additional software. But uh, there was a bigger reason I decided not to use serial for the printer configuration, and that is most printers do not have the four pin serial port or even an RS232 port. The universal connection for printers is the Centronix 36 pin parallel port. So that is what we're going to use. I've got a USB to parallel adapter and we can plug that in, set the printer up to use the parallel port. Uh, I don't know currently if this is a situation, but Linux traditionally has only supported a certain chipset for the parallel uh, printer port. So you pretty much just have to uh, buy and try to see if it's going to work. Um, now this one works great with Linux and uh, I got this from Amazon.com. It's the, uh, the Savrant USB 2.0 parallel printer cable. It's the Amazon choice right now. It's about eight bucks from Amazon. So on the back of the DMP-130, you've got a nice chart here that tells you how to configure everything. We'll pull the cover off. All right. The, this bank of two switches is to set whether it's parallel or serial. So if we turn both of those switches off, according to this table, it would be in parallel. So make sure those two switches are down. The other switch we will want to flip, and I know this from previously testing it, is you'll want to turn on its switch two, one dash two, you'll want the, that to be on. So it's the second dip switch there. You'll want that to be on, which means it won't translate the carriage return into a new line. It'll treat a carriage return as a carriage return. And that's because we're connecting this to uh, Raspberry Pi OS, which is a Linux operating system. Plug that into the parallel port on the printer. And then on our Raspberry Pi, so this adapter goes from the small to the normal USB. So I'll plug this into the USB port on the Raspberry Pi. And then I will plug the parallel port into that. And now we'll go back to the terminal and see how we find uh, that interface. All right, so we're back at my Linux computer with a terminal window open and we need to SSH into the Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna SSH Pi at whatever your IP address is on your network. Here's, here it is on my home network. All right, and it's gonna ask us for the password. And we're logged into the Raspberry Pi. It's the only device we've got plugged into USB on the, uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero. So if we do an LS USB, it'll list our devices. So Linux Foundation 2.0 Root Hub, that is the Raspberry Pi's uh, USB uh, hub, if you will. So the only other thing is this. This is the CH340S. That is our 
USB to parallel port. So we do see it, it recognizes it, that's good news. For Linux, parallel devices are automatically named LP0, LP1, LP2, etc. So this is the only one on here, it should be LP0. It puts these in a subdirectory under the slash dev. So if we cd to slash dev slash USB, we should see our device. And there it is, LP0. Now we need to install and configure a few other items, starting with CUPS. CUPS is the common Unix printing system. It is a, uh, a spooling and queue system. So you can define print queues. It handles printing jobs uh, locally as well as across the network. It takes care of broadcasting the presence of your printer out to other computers on your network. It also features a web interface, which we will be using. It makes it nice to be able to manage and add uh, printers. We'll be walking through adding this DMP-130 as a printer so that we can print to it from other computers on our network, which was our, our goal for this part. So we're going to do a sudo apt install cups and we'll hit enter. Now cups is a pretty large package and this package will also take a good amount of time to install so I'll pause the video and come back when this is uh, done. Okay it has installed cups that probably took 10 minutes. Uh, now a part of this is it creates a group called LP admin and only members in that group can administer printers through cups. So if what we want to do is add the user pi into the LP admin group. So we'll do a sudo user mod dash a uppercase g for group. The group name is LP admin and our user is pi. Alright, so we've added that. Now the last thing we need to do is open up the web browser so that uh, so we can allow anybody on the local network to point a web browser to our Raspberry Pi Zero and access the CUPS web GUI. Alright, so that is sudo CUPS CTL for CUPS control dash dash remote dash any. So if that worked correctly, we should be able to go to a browser and uh, open up the CUPS web browser that's running on the Raspberry Pi now. So we'll do a 192.168.1.63 colon 631. So port th 631 is the CUPS port that allows you to get access. All right, and there we go. Let me make that a little bigger. All right, so uh, what we can do is we can, we can view printers in here. We can, let me go to administration. We can add printers, we can find new printers, we can manage printers, we can manage print jobs. So if there's jobs sitting in a queue, we can delete them, change their priority, etc. So the first thing we need to do is add our new printer. We've got a printer sitting out there on LP0 for line printer 0, and we need to add it. So we will click add a printer. Now it's going to come back and tell us that we need to use the slash admin link, but it gives it to us here. Now I'll click Add a Printer. It should come and ask us for our username and password. That's on the Raspberry Pi. So user, username is Pi, and the password is whatever you've set it to. And uh, you can see up here, it's not the quickest interface, but it does work well. Okay, so now we're in to Add Printer. Now I don't know why this is, but the, but the parallel interface will come up as Unknown. But go ahead and select Unknown. That is the interface we want. We'll click continue. Now we have to give the printer a name. I'm going to give it DMP130, or you could call it, you can call it anything you want, just something unique on your network, but that's the uh, easy one to use. Uh, description, we're going to say that it's the Tandy DMP130 dot matrix printer. That'll give a nice description to anyone who's looking for the name of the print, uh, looking up information about the printer over the network. Location will be in Mike's office. Now here you can see the connection says USB colon slash slash unknown printer. And that's fine. That's what we're going to use. Okay, sharing. We want to share this printer. In other words, if we don't share it, we can only print to it from the Raspberry Pi Zero. If we share it, then it will be broadcast over the network so that any of my computers on my Wi-Fi network should be able to detect the printer 
and uh, you can add the printer on your different computers and print to the DMP-130. So we'll click continue. Again, it's spinning up here. Now it's going to ask us for the make. Well, not surprisingly, Tandy is not going to be listed here. Uh, maybe we'll fix that one day. But um, Now star is here. You could actually add a star in X1000 probably. But since it's not in here, we're going to select generic. So it's going to be generic printer. And I, I should note that you know we have to learn to crawl before we walk, before we run. This will be a text-only printer that we're setting up initially. So we're only going to be able to send text to it. You're not going to be able to send PCL or PostScript and print to the DMP-130. Uh, okay, we'll click continue. Again, it's spinning up here in the corner. And now it's going to ask for the model. Same thing, we aren't going to have any Tandy models in here, so we want generic text printer. Generic text only printer. We'll select that. We'll click add printer. And then it's going to come up with some uh, default options for us. It's still spinning up here. Okay. So there's not a lot of options for a, a generic text printer. Media size, uh, we're going to select U.S. letter because this is the U.S. I don't know that there's a big difference between A4 and, and letter, but uh, this isn't Europe. So we'll select uh, U.S. letter. I wish we were on the A4 standard here in the States, but we're not. All right. All uh, right. Long line handling, wrap it right edge, that's fine. Eight spaces for the tab stops, yes, that's fine. Now here's one, page and eight output, on for sheets, off for roll continuous. Now we're using continuous feed, so we'll turn this off. Uh, margins are all fine, we'll leave those as they are, and we'll click set default options, and uh, it has set them up successfully, and boom, there we are. We've got a printer called DMP-130, it's idle, it's accepting jobs, and it's shared. We should now be able to print to this printer from the Raspberry Pi. So let me shrink this down. We'll go back to our terminal. And uh, one of the things that we can do is we can run the LP stat command dash P to list our printers. There we go. We see printer DMP 130 is idle and enabled. So it's ready to print. And if everything's connected correctly, it should print. We just need to give it something to print. Let's see. Let's do an ls-l of slash var and see how big that output is. Okay, that's not huge. That's great. So we can pipe the output of that. ls-l slash var. And again, we are on the Raspberry Pi doing this. ls-l slash var, and we're going to pipe it to the lp command dash d, and then we specify the name of the printer. In this case, dmp130. Let's hit enter and see what happens. All right, we're printing. The printer's going. and it's printing out the uh, directory that we just sent to it. Well, this is the end of part three. We've covered a lot of ground in this episode, and we have the Raspberry Pi Zero printing to a DMP-130. In part four, we'll print from other computers on the network and learn about managing print jobs. I'll see you in part four. Thanks for watching.